My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll do it and make friends. I'm just trying to save you a little money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate, teach you, explain how things like this happen today. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Worrisome day. The war between Israel and Hamas, almost one week old, has entered a new phase where Israel's warning more than one million Gaza Strip residents to leave northern Gaza in 24 hours, presumably to ready for a ground invasion. The uncertainty here caused many traders to close out their positions, believing nothing positive can possibly happen to this phase. So why not sit on the sidelines for the weekend and put your money back to work on Monday? I get that. That's what I used to do. I was a trader. But we're investing on this show. And that's why many of the standout earnings reports ultimately got ignored that shouldn't have. United Health, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, they reported numbers that were initially well received. But as fears of a conflict spun out of control, their stocks all pulled back from the morning highs. Sell, sell, sell. In the end, the Dow finished up just 39 points. The S&P lost 0.5%. NASDAQ tumbled 1.23%. Boy, at one point, the market was really smoking up 326 points. The hardest hit stocks, well, they were the mega caps. They all took sizable hits. I think that was simply because they're so easy to sell and then get back in on Monday. With that in mind, why don't we go to the game plan? Next week is a pivotal period. Well, I think that everything will be overshadowed by what happens in Gaza, no doubt about it. This is still a very important week. It starts off with Charles Schwab. That's a stock that's become quite cheap. But people are concerned about its balance sheet. I think those fears are way overdone. Wall Street disagrees with me, which is why the stock has had a very hard time advancing. Maybe we can find out why. Tuesday's huge. It starts out with Bank of America, which should get a nice pop if it's, if it's anywhere near as good as Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan were today. I think that Goldman Sachs should have an excellent quarter. It's still in disposal mode, getting rid of extraneous business lines that aren't in keeping with a company that wants to become the key depository of the wealthy people of the world, as well as the king of underwriting and mergers and acquisitions. We know that our government's committed to helping Israel with military aid, which always seems to be a good, good news for Lockheed Martin. I think they can tell an excellent story here. We also get earnings from J&J &J on Tuesday morning. Lately, the company's been quiet about its tax litigation. I'll say it again. I don't think the stock can mount a serious rally until shareholders get some resolution because nobody wants to get stuck for all these lawsuits and wait for them to play out. Maybe the J&J, &J, maybe they have some sort of announcement about a resolution. That'd be something. After the closure of the airlines, of course, this group's had a decidedly mixed moment. Fuel costs are going higher. Tourist uh, customers seem to be topping out. But the business travelers started to return. Last time we came out positive about Delta after post earnings decline, that's the go-to name of the group. Wednesday completes the important bank reports when we hear from Morgan Stanley. This charitable trust name has become a horrendous holding for me. I can't believe it has fallen this low. That said, I think Morgan Stanley's a buy ahead of the quarter as they have a lot of good businesses beyond just wealth management. It is a shame what's happened to that stock. How about Procter? The consumer staples have all been trading together and, and, and actually trading down because of these new GLP-1 anti-diabetes and weight loss drugs. Oddly, Procter & Gamble's come down with them because it's part of the consumer packaged goods group. Never mind that Procter's not in the food or beverage business. I think it's a mistake. One more reason why we own Procter for the Travel Trust and one more reason why we can find gains, you and I, because this stock's been lumped in like it's a, like it's a cereal company. How silly. Next, one of the greatest blue chips of our era is Abbott Labs, and that's been pummeled because it makes a glucose monitor for diabetes patients. The theory is that these new weight loss drugs will reduce obesity, leading to fewer cases of type 2 diabetes and thus less demand for these monitors. Now, I think the stock's been overly punished, though, and, and it, it has really lost much more in its market cap than it could lose in sales for the product. But I'm pretty lonely in my pro Abbott Labs position, so I have to be careful. After the close, we hear from two of the most important names for even the casual stock follower, and that's Netflix and Tesla. The setup's pretty negative for both of them, as we've been hearing lots of suboptimal commentary about each company. Netflix caught a downgrade today on what's thought to be a declining customer acquisition story. Tesla's all about the desire to cut price to levels where they can still make money, but others can't, except in China. That's not the business, best position to find yourself in. What else? Well, one of my old favorites, Lamb Research, is reporting that, they, look, they've been capturing a lot of attention lately because there's a strong possibility that the semiconductor glut is finally over, meaning there might be more demand for Lamb's chip-making machines down here. Huge positive. The stock could turn out to be pretty cheap, even though it's had a big run. 
Thursday morning, we hear from ATT. Right now, it sells at about six times earnings with a 7.7% yield. I think that's actually a perilous situation, so I wouldn't touch it. If the stock pops, I'd blow it out. Oh, what the hell? I, I might just blow it out anyway. One I want to pay close attention to is Key Corp. It's run by Chris Gorman. He's very talented. Stock yields 7.8%, maybe emblematic of the well-run regional banks that nobody wants to own. Key is a conservative bank in a growth area. I think it deserves your attention. When Union Pacific reports Thursday morning, what I'm really going to do is try to hear about the up-to-minute reports about cargo volumes. That's a great barometer of all sorts of economic activity. We have Fed Chief Jay Powell talking on Thursday, too. And, I, I, look, I sure hope he sees some inflation diminution. I, I think it, 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 he'll say that inflation is not yet under control. We know that, although people will still be surprised that he says that. And that rates need to stay higher longer because of it. And people will still be surprised at that because people can be pathetic in their views of the market. Thursday night, we get results from Intuitive Surgical, ISRG, and I'm concerned about how this stock could get so hammered because of worries about these new weight loss drugs. Now, many of the surgeries doctors use to, or intuitive machines for turn out to be somewhat obesity-related. For example, they do this bariatric uh, surgery, and i got to believe that fewer people will get that for weight loss if there's an injection that's nearly as effective. It, it had to be a big source of growth, and now I'm hearing that source of growth is slowing down. Everyone keeps trying to say that commercial real estate is going, going to crush the banks, right? So far, that is uh, so far uh, not so fast. It, that's just not right. We heard from a bunch of banks today. It wasn't true. If you want to know whether there's been a further degradation in office real estate, go listen to the SL Green Realty Conference call on Thursday afternoon. This is actually a pretty good company. As I handle on the real estate situation, even as short sellers like to treat it as a free buyer zone. Friday, Friday's American Express Day, and it'll most likely give you some decent numbers. I know the consumer's getting tapped out, and that might impact the cadence of the quarter. But this company has so much going for it that its stock could be interesting down here. And we also have SLB reporting. Now, this the oil service usually known as Slum Slumberger. I hope it doesn't cost, it didn't cost too much to come up with that uh, SLB moniker, as it really was just the stock symbol. Thanks to the recent run-up in crude, I bet SLB reports a terrific quarter. Here's the bottom line. The war with will can continue to overshadow earnings season. But if you keep track of these companies and there's a cessation in the conflict, the market will eventually embrace the good ones. So keep track of them. It could come in handy. Let's go to Brent in Colorado, please. Brent. Hey, Jim. First of all, thanks for all the help you give us out here. Thank you, Brent. Um, Hey, uh, you know, with the Lily-type drugs and weight loss drugs, there's been a lot of focus, it seems like, on, um, you know, the snack companies losing market share, that type of thing. But on the other side of the coin, does that weight loss lead to new wardrobes, you know, new pants? So would Levi's, you know, benefit uh, with their increased earnings in the future, and would that be a good investment? All right, so, Brent, that's a great question. I actually posed it to, uh, to Chip Berg, the CEO of Levi's Strauss, this week, and the answer is yes, uh, you're right. Uh, just like people gain too much weight during the, uh, the COVID epidemic, uh, people are losing a lot of weight with these, and they do have to go redo their wardrobe, and Levi's is going to be a winner. So I like your thinking. How about we go to Chris in Washington? Chris. Hey, Jim. Happy Friday. Oh, same to you. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Um, I've been looking at starting a position in a financial services company. I know the trust owns Morgan Stanley. But what do you think about T. Rowe, given its status as a dividend aristocrat? Okay, uh, I don't want you to, you know, look, here's where I am. The House of Pain. And I do not want you to enter the House of Pain, and that's, I think, what you'll have with T. Rowe. It's a very good company. I've known it for years. But it doesn't matter. This group is from Hades. All right. The war in Israel will continue to cast a shadow over stocks. But if we get any positive developments, I think the market will revert to the good stories that we'll hear from earnings season. On May Money tonight, celebration of the first anniversary of last year's market-wide bottom. I'm taking a look at how the rallies unfolded and the stocks that have moved higher. Plus, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup all reported today. I'm breaking down the banks and what their earnings could mean for the overall market. Plus, I'll reveal where, Black, where BlackRock's bankable Larry Fink sees opportunity in this market and what it could mean for your portfolio. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? 
Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.